All right, boys, it's finally here, the new RTX 3050 from NVIDIA, the card that we've all been waiting for, and probably the most important launch for NVIDIA this year. The RTX 3050 aims to replace cards like the GTX 1650, the 1050, the 50 class GPUs from the past, which were the budget you know, cards for the masses. But this GPU is a little different. The pricing starts at $250 MSRP, and the availability is the big question here. But in this video, Let's find out if it's any good. My name is Yusuf, you're already watching Tech Droids, and let's play some games. Now before I talk about the RTX 3050, a huge shout out to Ankit Infotech and Vikas for providing this card for review. You can check out his website pcstudio.in which has a custom PC building option now so you can build a PC with the RTX 3050 using an Intel 11 gen, 12 gen CPU or also an AMD 3000 series or 5000 series CPU and you know you can build a really nice solid gaming PC under 1 lakh rupees using the RTX 3050 on his site and get it delivered to your doorstep pan India. No matter where you live in India, it will be delivered to your doorstep and it's just plug and play with good service and also an offline store located in SP Road, Bangalore. If you're a you know, Bangalore native customer, you can just walk in there and buy it personally. But let's say you want to order online, I'll leave links down below. The address you know, to his shop, his phone number, his social media, all the details will be in the description down below. So do check him out. With that being said, let's talk about the RTX 3050. All right, so the RTX 3050 we are talking here comes from Zotac. This is the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 3050 Twin Edge. And there's also a Twin Edge OC edition, which comes with a slightly higher clock speed. Now, the thing with Zotac cars is that they come with a five-year warranty, and you also get two fans towards the front, and an overall really small form factor. So if you have a smaller case, even if a micro ATX case, or if you're doing you know, small form factor builds in mini ITX cases, you could fit something like this really easily. With two fans and a metal backplate, this is a really nice you know, card in my opinion, a really nice design, good build quality as well. You've got the Zotac gaming logo here, the live to game text over here, and this feels premium in my opinion, a pretty decent sized heatsink as well, and the front of the card is made out of plastic. There's a Zotac gaming logo here, and also a GeForce RTX branding. So that's the Zotac card the five-year warranty, the iStorm 2.0 cooling with the fan freeze technology. When your card is not under load, the fan will stop spinning. So that's about the Zotac card. I like the design. But now let's talk about the RTX 3050 itself. Coming with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, it's better than the RX 6500 XT that AMD launched, which was a disaster. And it also has 2560 CUDA cores. It is based on the new Ampere architecture with second generation ray tracing core and third generation tensor cores, and also 128 bit bus. And it's also compatible with PCI Gen 4 X8. So, you know, it's using a lot more bandwidth as well on the PCI Gen 4 standard, which is really nice with three display ports, and that's gonna be your 1.4A, and you also have a one HDMI 2.1 port. So you've got you know, multiple display outputs, and you also need a eight pin PCI you know, power connector. So this card does require external power, and it's rated at you know, about 150 watts by NVIDIA, which is the max power consumption. And you know, NVIDIA recommends a 500 watt power supply. Zotac says a 450 watt power supply should also do. I think a 550, 500 watt power supply should be more than enough to use this card as it is a pretty entry level card so it's not going to be that power hungry. So that's really nice in my opinion. And you know, those are the specs. It has got DirectX 12 and welcome support. And you'll also be able to use things like ray tracing, DLSS, and you also get their NVENC encoder which is helpful in live streaming and video editing which we'll talk about in a bit. But you know, those are the specs of the RTX 3050 but I know you guys are not here for the specs. So let's talk about the gaming test bench we're gonna be using to do the benchmarks. So for the CPU, I'm using the Ryzen 5 3600 with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz DDR4 RAM from PNY. This is their Accelerate Epic X RGB RAM. I've also got the ASRock B450M Steel Legend motherboard with the NZXT Kraken 120, 120 mm AIO doing the cooling job. And you also have a PNY 500 gigabyte CS3040 Gen 4 SSD you know, to house all our games and also the you know, Windows operating system. 
And we've also got a NZXT C850 power supply with the RTX 3050 as our GPU. And all of that is packed up into the NZXT H510 Elite case. But with the test bench out of the way, let's talk about the gaming benchmarks. All right, so you've seen the normal rasterization benchmarks now. Let's talk about ray tracing performance. I'm gonna be testing a bunch of games and also be telling you guys the settings I've used and if DLSS is on or off. So here are some ray tracing benchmarks. All right, so you've seen the you know, benchmarks, normal rasterization, ray tracing. Let's talk content creation, live streaming and video editing. As I mentioned in the start of the video, this has got the NVENC encoder in build. So, you know, which takes up a lot of the load from your CPU while you're doing things like live streaming, recording gameplay and video editing. So things like, you know, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is an MLE or, you know, OBS Studio, which is used for live streaming, a really popular software, you could select you know, this graphics card to take all of the load for your encoding and your processing. So when you're live streaming a game, it's becoming really easy for your CPU to just focus on its job and not really get into the graphics card's job. And you know, this is gonna be handling all the encoding. And to demonstrate that, I actually tested two types of games. So, you know, one AAA title and one esports title that's actually really popular and gets streamed a lot. So for our AAA title, I'm using God of War. At 6000 bitrate, I am streaming at 1080p 60fps and the test stream was really smooth and I was still getting really good FPS in game, above 70fps, really playable. So if you're streaming AAA games, God of War is a new game, pretty demanding, looks really good and I think a lot of people will be actually streaming that game at 1080p 60fps. So if you're looking for a budget streaming card, you know, affordable streaming card, if you're you know, planning to get into live streaming, don't have a lot of money, the RTX 3050 I think is a really good card and you can actually consider it because the NVENC encoder on it is really powerful. And I also streamed again, Valorant, again, 6,000 bitrate to YouTube. And at 1080p, 60 FPS, I was getting you know, 200 plus FPS or 180 plus FPS average in Valorant as well while live streaming. So live streaming performance is good on the RTX 3050. Talking content creation, you can edit videos up to 4K and render them really quickly in things like Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, any software that supports NVIDIA's CUDA acceleration and their NVENC encoder, 
can take use of this you know, GPU's power. So the NVENC encoder is really helpful. The RT cores help in the ray tracing performance and the tensor cores help in the DLSS performance. Now DLSS, in my opinion, is a really nice technology. It doesn't really take away from the quality of your game, but you know, drastically improves performance by doing some upscaling magic. So NVIDIA's image scaling technology and their AI is on point here. And I think they're way better than AMD when it comes to all you know, these kind of tasks. So that's that. All right, so the gaming benchmarks are good. Now let's talk about power consumption, thermals, and acoustic performance of this card. Now I say this specific Zotac Twin Edge card because thermals and acoustics and even power consumption sometimes can change and vary from different brands and different variants. If you get like an MSI, an ASUS, an EVGA or a Galax card, the power consumption, you know, the thermals, acoustics might change up a little bit. So, you know, this is going to be the you know specific results for the Zotac Twin Edge card. In terms of power consumption, on idle, this card takes about 15 watts and in gaming loads, I have seen this card hover around 80 to 100 watts. And while I did the stress testing using Furmark at a 5K resolution for about 10, 15 minutes, I got about 129 watts of power. You know, this card can take up to 130 watts. That's the max I saw during my settings. So, you know, 15 watts is gonna be your minimum power consumption, 80 to 100 watts in your gaming and you know, maximum if you're really stressing this GPU, 130 watts is what I clocked. So that's the power consumption. And although it is you know, slightly power hungry comparing to a 50 class GPU, and also when you compare it to the Radeon RX 6500 XT, which I reviewed recently, the extra power also brings you a lot of extra performance, a lot of extra frames, and you know, the NVENC encoder, video editing performance, live streaming performance, DLSS, lots of stuff. And I don't mind if the power consumption is a little more, you know, it's not going to be the most efficient card out there, but it's not a power hungry beast either. It's somewhere in the middle. It's pretty balanced. And I kind of like the card and have no complaints about the power consumption. Talking about thermal performance, again, idle temperatures were about 37 degrees Celsius, you know, for the overall GPU and the max temperature is about 64 degrees Celsius and the hotspot temperature. Now the hotspot is usually the actual chip of the graphics card you know, the processing unit inside, the hotspot of the, you know, GPU goes up to 75 degrees Celsius, you know, max, like even if you're stressing the GPU. So that's really, you know, not that hot in my opinion. And that's gonna be for the Zotac Twin Edge card. I have seen some reviews for other brands like AVGA, MSI, ASUS, you know, some other brands as well. The power consumption, the thermals are pretty much, you know, at the similar number, maybe a few watts here and there, maybe a few degrees here and there. So that's that. And talking about acoustics, this Zotac Twin Edge card is actually really quiet and does not really make any noise. I was barely able to hear it. And the fans never spin above 40% RPM. So, you know, that's actually pretty good that it's able to cool the card really well. That means their Ice Storm 2.0 cooling is actually working and the heatsink is doing its job. Now, coming to the conclusion. Originally, when the RTX 3050 was announced, I thought this was going to compete with previous generation RTX cards or at least defeat all of the 16 series GTX cards. But that's not really the case here. The RTX 3050 falls behind the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1660 Super in some cases in some games. You know, although by a little margin, but I think this is actually just replacing the 50 class GPUs and a bunch of 16 series GPUs like the 1660, maybe the 1660 Ti, but it does not really defeat the 1660 Super and the RTX 2060. So those cards are still better, but those cards are also really good at mining. So, you know, availability and pricing for those cards is really bad. Whereas the RTX 3050 has really bad mining performance. It's less than 15 you know, mega hash when it comes to mining Ethereum. But having bad mining performance is actually a good thing because you know, miners won't be buying this. So it's gonna be available you know, slightly easier and also at a slightly cheaper price. And in India, this is available you know, cheapest. I saw this card was about 35,000 rupees. So that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. And you know, depending upon the brand and the variant, the card's price will change. Like this Zotac Twin Edge variant, was retailing for about 35,000 is what I saw. And if you want like an ASUS or a MSI or you know, an overclocked edition of this card, you'll have to shell out a little bit more money. And globally, I think amazon.com day one launch, I saw this card retailing for around $400, which is way higher than its $250 MSRP. But again, with the inflated pricing, 
I think this card is still better value than buying you know, older 16 series cards or buying older AMD cards. And I think the RTX 3050 is a good entry level card. Although it's nothing groundbreaking, nothing you know, mind blowing, doesn't really you know, beat everything out of the water, but a good entry level option in my opinion. You know, way better than the RX 6500 XT from AMD. But that doesn't mean that the $250 MSRP, you know, is really value for money. I think NVIDIA knows at this point, whatever they make and sell at any price, it just works. It just sells because how the situation for graphics cards is right now with all the inflation, the silicon shortage, the hardware shortage. But overall, I'm happy with the RTX 3050. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and smash like button, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. Join the Discord server if you have any questions or queries, or you can also leave them down below in the comment section. I'll be there replying to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. My name has been Yusuf. You guys have been awesome. Stay awesome, keep smiling, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.